All right, guys, so we are on episode two at the Ironside Garage. Uh, as promised, we are going to be doing the Jack Daniels coolant overflow today. I have got, let's see if I can get her in here. There she is. There's the shop boss there jumping into the scene. There you go. So we'll be doing that install today and uh, just kind of, you know, uh, working through that. I'll probably break the video down into like 10 minute clips. Um, including, you know, putting the stainless steel line on there and everything. So we'll, uh, we'll get started on all that and let you guys see it and, uh, let me know what you think. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, um, start with just running the hose and running the stainless line. So if you're going to work with this stuff, sometimes it can be kind of a pain, but, so kind of push it up. So, and it'll tighten on there. A lot of times I like to run black electrical tape on the ends here, too, to, uh, keep it from fraying. But we're just going to push up and let it slide over. And you can see that to get the entire hose covered. Stuff here. Uh, I have a little bit longer than what I need, but uh, I'm going to trim it down some. But, but I don't have to worry about snipping this stainless line, I'll probably won't. Of course, I'll cover it. Cover it with some. Uh, Black electrical tape, and that just made it a little easier too when I'm installing it in the cap here because it won't it just make it easier slide through and it's not fraying up on me. So I'm gonna get this done. Alright, so that's good on this end, and then I'm gonna have to trim it a little bit on this end here. No problem. And I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna run some black electrical tape here to seal this up. And then we'll run. Alright, so had to trim it a little bit on one end, but we should be good now. I'm gonna throw some black electrical tape on there. And I'll just make it easier later. I'm gonna make a couple passes on it. And I'll just keep that line from fraying on you. Just be careful too, because that. Uh, sharpen that stuff up. Hope the crap out of you. Alright, there's one end done. I'm probably gonna trim this a little bit more. Trim it back just a little bit. We can normally only cut just a little bit of this stuff at a time, because uh, I don't think I'm gonna cut it with them. Uh, he's gonna see what that's gonna be, guys. So, don't keep cut. Just trim up this edge a little bit. Alright, so I'll show you guys where I was gonna mount it. This is what my thinking was here so here's your spot here where the coolant overflow comes out so I'm gonna mount it right over here actually because I've already got from where these lines had a the bracket there so I can kind of do it at an angle that and it'll be visible that's kind of my thing too if I've mounted up here or even where the old uh, windshield washer reservoir was which I'll need to fix that at some point it should not get hit by anything like road debris wise and uh it should be should be good I have enough hose to run it over there properly and it'll be up out of the way that and it'll be visible so when people when i pop the hood be able to see it and i think that's kind of the point too all right so there's all your pieces parts laid out there's your bracket and it does have these rubber bushings and stuff on there to keep the bottle from making any contact and it's got them on there and you can mount this thing in a variety of different ways you can mount it laying down like I'm at, going to at an angle you can set it upright there's just a bunch of different ways that you can do it here's all your pieces parts and your uh, directions and everything so we'll just kind of keep working through this like I said it's the first time I've ever installed one of these so we'll see how this goes not a whole lot to it though um, so we'll just kind of right, keep so it's coming with these hex bolts here like this and they've got a little rubber bushing on there to keep it from like vibrating and um, causing damage to it. So basically what you're going to do is run it through and then that will go on the back side. And so I'll show you guys, like I said, where I was going to mount it. And since I've already got one hole right there, I can use that and fasten it on the back. And then what I'll do is mark that one, that bottom hole and drill drill it out to mount it and it'll sit like that which would be kind of cool we'll be sitting at an angle and then that hose will run from here down here and right into the top of the bottle and of course we'll put a little coolant in there and it said it did recommend that you keep it about two inches from the bottom so i said a half inch earlier but when going through the instructions it said uh half inch but when installing this too keep in mind that you want to kind of keep it away from heat because it is glass but i think where i'm at there should be should be fine it's far enough away from the manifolds and 
I think everything else it should be fine. I don't think it'll get hit by rocks or anything. And if so, whatever, we'll get another bottle and we'll keep going. Um, I went ahead and drilled that hole out there to mount the bottom piece so it'd be secure. And actually everything worked out fine. I just marked it with a little paint pen and then it'll just go, it'll sit like that right in that spot there. So that worked out pretty nicely. Now, the one thing I will say is that it didn't come with any fasteners for the back. Uh, good thing is I always have like a hardware kit that just has uh, nuts and bolts and stuff like that. So I should have some fasteners for the back of it to be able to secure it and then just get up in there and the under fender and then get it. So it shouldn't be a problem. And that'll keep it nice and secure. I'll put a lock and washer and all that stuff on there. So it's got it on hand tight right now. Um, but you'll throw the bolts on there and a washer. And then that, you might not be able to see it, but that rubber grommet kind of shock is over piece will sit back behind there. So, and then I just, as you can see, everything kind of comes through the fender here. You see those two bolts. And I just got it on hand tight right now to kind of just secure it um, while I finish the rest of the installation. But so far it's been pretty easy. Everything matched up pretty well. I did have to provide some hardware to, to fasten it on the back end because it didn't come with anything, but not a big deal. Like I said, just make sure you have a hardware kit and I had washer, lock and washer and all that and nut to fasten it on there. Probably throw a little thread locker on there too, just to make sure that it stays. But we'll continue with the rest of the installation. And there's the fam pulling stuff out. There's the other one. The other one is way out there. For mine, I'm gonna use a 3 8 And I would do, just make sure when you're drilling your cap out that you don't bust the insides of those threads so it'll be able to seal on the bottle. Blakey. So I'm gonna just be real careful with it. And it's plastic, so it should be pretty easy to do. All right, so I got it drilled. It's kind of ugly. I'm gonna sand it a little bit to get it and then we still got to drill a vent hole but I'm gonna drill a small one for that we need it just big enough to fit that hose down in there which we're not quite there yet so we'll have to drill out a little more but I think it was successful in staying away from the edges so drill that out drill your little vent use one of your smaller drill bits maybe a maybe one eighth or something but I'll show you all the finished product once I get it all cleaned up and everything. Be real careful with drilling this thing out because you don't want to ruin this cap and then you have to try to find another one or you just get a whole new bottle. But um, just be real careful drilling it out. I did already drill the vent hole there and there's that. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. Kind of ugly. If you've got a little file or something, you could I had to drill it out a little bit. So uh, for that larger hose going in there. But all in all, it's okay. And kind of glad that I did the tape because it makes it a lot easier pushing it through there, keeping it from snagging on that stainless, on that stainless line as you're pushing it through. So throw some, throw some on there if you're going to. If you're just running a plain hose into it, then it won't be an issue. And then I did sand it a little bit on the top to just kind of deburr it um, and clean it up a little bit. And then I'll, I'll probably file that a little bit and kind of make that hole a little better. But not too bad just be real careful drilling it out because you don't want to ruin that cap and you want to make sure it's still see if it still threads onto our bottle here and it does Ready or not, so leaking. there you go i took a little round sandstone like that and that cleaned it up and now we've got a pretty good looking cap to go on there it's cleaned up a little bit enough for for my purposes at least, like I said, no, it's, it's fine to me, it'll work. No, I just went ahead and threaded it through, you can see, it's okay. Um, 
I said about two inches from the bottom, so it should be good there. Putting that tape on the end of that hose made it a lot easier, but there you go. So it'll run into it like that. I'm gonna say it'll run to the radiator. Put our nice fitting on there. This piece right here to slide over the top is an absolute pain in the ass. Um, I may have to get, just flip it upside down. I'm not sure. They actually recommended spitting on it, so yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, maybe some WD-40 instead of spitting on it, but uh, yeah. The other issue that I'm having is I can't get this thing to seat in here with these rubber bushings. The only way I could get it seated was on these bottom four here. The only way I could do that was pulling all these other ones off, but you want those on there because you don't want that glass and metal contact in. Hey, baby, let me see a little gremlin here in here. Let me see. So I'm not sure what I'm going to have to do because you can see I can't get this bottle with those rubber grommets to seat down in there. So I don't know if I'm going to have to kind of bend these tabs out a little bit to get it to seat down in there. Um, hoping I'm not going to have to do all that, but, and you can see, I can't get it to seat, but this was pretty far off too from the back here to get this to bolt. So I might have to flip this upside down so then it can hit here. And as I understand it's for a 750 milliliter bottle, like kind of a, your typical size. So we'll see, I'll let you know what I come up with as far as getting this thing to sit down in there and how, how that works out. I may have to, like I said, flip this piece upside down so that it can go but that's not what the instructions show and it does have these nice little carriage bolts and brass fittings to fasten it down when you get to that part but i had to pull it out because it was not not seating down in there so i'm gonna have to play with that and see what i come up with I had to bend the bracket out a little bit and i'm still having trouble getting these getting that bottle to seat properly and I inverted the one around there, and I definitely recommend a little bit of WD-40 around this neck piece here, but I turned it this way, which will allow it to get down in there now and bolt up. But this bottle just doesn't really fit in there, because I know it's supposed to be for you know, your kind of standard Jack Daniels bottle. It doesn't really fit down in there keep it from coming in contact and I keep see having problems with these rubber bushings even after I bent because I bent these out a little bit too so you can see to get it to sit down so I'll keep messing around with it but uh, I think we'll get it to work it's just I have to give it a little love I might have to I don't know. But I definitely wouldn't disregard these because you don't want metal coming in contact with that glass, especially if it's vibrating around any. This is what those little bushings are for, just keep it from coming in contact with metal and vibrating around and having any issues. So we'll keep working at it and see what I continue to come up with. I said I bent these brackets out just a little bit so I could get it to seat down in there, which did help some. So we'll get it figured out. We got it modified just enough to get in there and I think it'll be pretty secure. Um, I just had, like I said, I had to bend these tabs out a little bit and bend this forward a little bit to get it. And then I think it will be good. And then invert that because otherwise it wasn't going to be able to bolt down in there and keep it secure. So now we're going to go back in there. Now what I did do to, as well was take that washer off from this piece right here because it was going to stick up a little too high past this, uh, this rubber bushing here and it could make make contact with that glass so i'm going to try to keep keep from that happening so now we'll put this back in there secure it and then that'll probably be a pain in the butt trying to mount this at an angle and get that in there secured and then bolt it down but we'll get it we'll get it figured out and uh we'll keep filming and we're getting getting close to the final product here beauty into the uh garage here because we're running out of light i got it remounted here and uh Everything seems to be okay. I'm gonna get it fastened down real good. Um, like I said, I had to modify that bracket a little bit and that was kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, to be expected, you know, you're gonna run into some issues here and there. Anyway, so we got it and I'm gonna tighten all that down, try to get the bottle secured and then run it. Uh, might be a good idea to disconnect your battery cables 
with that stainless line so we'll probably run it down tight right in here in between there so it's not coming into contact with those battery cables and probably gonna reroute those as well yeah so we'll just keep going get it all installed and see how she works so I ended and routed the hose I couldn't put the fitting on there because there wasn't enough room here so <clears throat> that's just gonna have to sit like that but I went and routed it up underneath the cable so that metal line doesn't come in contact with it and then we'll put the bottle in and run it like I said about two inches from the bottom get that bottle seated in there now I'm gonna go ahead and put some coolant in there because it'll look kind of cool I think I've got a jug of coolant sitting around somewhere um, so it already has some contents in it um, I'm not gonna put too much in there though because I just I don't want to worry about it sloshing around while I'm trying to get it installed and fastened down so we're getting close it's coming along all right since you guys are learning from my mistakes here i had to undo this piece here so i can have a little bit of play in it and i would recommend taking your bolts that are going to secure that neck there and taping them back behind there to keep them in place and that'll make it a lot easier when you go to start tightening everything down so yeah that's what i got to do now is tighten these up put these in there put some tape behind them to keep them in place and then i'll be able to tighten everything down and secure it and then should be able to run the line and get everything else done all right that fast and we got some black electrical tape which we can pull off now later holding those carriage bolts on we're going to go ahead and put the bottle in there and get it fit and tie it down and then we should be able to run the line in the top of it and that should be it surf's up dude all right so this has been kind of a pain in the ass to get these things, these bolts tightened and all that, but now we've got it in there pretty secure. One of the, now I told you y'all saw earlier, I had to modify the bracket. Now it seems pretty good. I don't think we've got any metal contacting, but when I was putting it in there, trying to get it fitted, one of these rubber bushings did come out and I am not gonna take it apart and redo it at this point in time. Um, I don't foresee it being an issue, but yeah, this whole fitment and getting these tied, tightened, and like I said, it, any number of reasons, but it was just, it was a pain. Um, but we got it there, and it's in there. It looks pretty good. Last step is to run our line. Like I said, they recommended about two inches from the bottom. Um, probably be about right there. And then you'll just tighten all that up and there you have it time will tell i'll, uh, I'll give you all an update um I'm, I'm driving around a little bit just uh just in the neighborhood and stuff like that i'll give you all an update and see if it breaks how it holds up if it's wiggling around if it gets loose whatever um and we'll let you guys know but we're pretty much done here i'll give you all a final snapshot once i get it all tightened down and everything but yeah that's pretty much that there it, you know, you're going to have to kind of make it comply with you, give it a little love to get it in there. All right, guys, thank you for checking out another video of Ironside Garage. Um, that's, that's it with the Jack Daniels coolant overflow uh, install. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And then next we need to, uh, I've got it at Edelbrock. Uh, choke cable just a just kind of one of their um, universal ones that I'm going to put in because the one that's on there now is uh, the knobs busted and you can see like it's not even it's not even hooked up right now and I don't think it's long enough to reach that holly carb on the other side so we'll have to get that installed like I said you can see here the knobs knobs busted it's not working so Sorry about the poor quality of the video at the end, but we, uh, the gimbal was dying. And so we're losing battery here on stuff after doing all this, but we got it in.